Hello, my name is Leopoldo Armesto, and in this video I will talk about the types of sensors that are frequently used in mobile robots. Details of some of the technologies described here will be seen in greater depth in other presentations. In this presentation we will classify sensors based on the type of information they provide, internal or external. We will focus on unexplained odometry sensors, range sensors, cameras and positioning systems. Sensors in robotics can be classified as proprioceptive or exteroceptive. Proprioceptive sensors allow measuring internal variables of the robot, such as speed, acceleration, angles, the battery level, the position of a lever, etc. They are typically used to close low-level control loops, since their acquisition and processing time is generally fast. On the other hand, exteroceptive sensors allow measuring uh, variables external to the robot, such as the position of nearby objects. They can be used to determine the position and orientation of the robot from beacons, satellites, or for instance using cameras. In general, the acquisition and processing time is much longer, so it's usually convenient to combine both types of sensors in order to use the best of each world. There are many proprioceptive sensors that allow measuring different types of variables uh, of interest in robots. Here I made a classification based on the type of signal we intended to measure. In the first group we include those sensors that we use to measure the displacement of an axis, whether linear or rotary, and we will typically measure it uh, with a sensor such as encoder, or a potentiometer, a resolver, or even Hall effect sensors. IMOS, on the other hand, are sensors that combine accelerometers and gyroscopes uh, to measure accelerations such as the gravit uh, gravitational force, angular rates, and consequently are often, uh, or often used to measure the orientation of a mobile robot. They are typically uh, combined or used in flying robots uh, such as UAVs uh, together with uh, or combined with uh, magnetometers and uh, global positioning sensors uh, to allow precise positioning, for instance, of a drone. Current sensors allow closing control loops in DC motors, for instance, to control and limit the maximum torque that the motor applies to, to the load. And finally, other types of sensors, such as limit switches, battery indicators, etc., they are usually used to measure other types of internal variables. Within exteroceptive sensors, we can find a wide variety of range sensors whose purpose is to measure distances to objects close to the robot, such as infrared, ultrasound, laser or LiDAR, and radar sensors. It is also very common for robots to use cameras to capture images or in videos and apply computer vision techniques to detect objects of interest uh, within the image. Uh, we can find different types of cameras, such as line cameras, which are used in industry, but not usually in robots. Area or 2D cameras or 3D cameras are widely used in robots. Cameras, depending on their optics, can be orthogonal, perspective, fisheyes, or omnidirectional uh, cameras, and that will depend on the application, what kind of optics we use. Other exteroceptive sensors allow, based on a set of triangulations, to obtain the position and the orientation of the robot, as is the case of global navigation satellite systems, such as GPS. Also, indoor localization systems using beacons, such as, based on technology, technologies such as laser or ultra-wideband systems, can be used to localize robots or objects in indoor environments. There are many other exteroceptive sensors we can use in robotics. Here, uh, or I highlight magnetometers or electronic compasses, bumper sensors, force and torque sensors that are widely used in robotic arms, etc. Odometry sensors are those that we use in robots to measure the path or displacement of the mobile robot, but they are uh, subject to drift in the estimation of the position and the orientation of the robot. Thus, they are known as dead recording sensors. Within the odometry sensors, we usually find encoders, IMOs, and other devices such as potentiometers and whole effect sensors. In particular, encoders allow measuring the displacement or rotation of an axis using a rotary disk, 
allowing and blocking the light of a, an infrared emitter that it's been detected by a photo detector and absolute encoders can directly measure the position, the angle of the axis while incremental encoders measure its position from increments with respect to some kind of reference position. To read from an incremental encoder we need to detect rising and falling edges of two signals. This is usually done through some a specific hardware uh, electronics known as quadrature and they are available in many microcontrollers. Encoders are usually attached to the axis of a wheel or in general to any robot joint to measure their speed or position. They have some systematic errors for instance caused by uh, the wheel uh, alignments or the wheel effective radius, uh, wheel slippage, etc. if we want to use them in order to estimate the position of the robot. On the other hand, IMOS are inertial measurement units that integrate accelerometers, gyroscopes and magnetometers. Currently, they are integrated into chips using MEMS technology that can detect uh, the, these, uh, these uh, magnitudes in three axes, X, Y and Z. Both accelerometers and gyroscopes have offsets in the measurements which implies that integrate them over time in order to estimate the position or the orientation that causes drifts as well. Accelerometers are in particularly affected by the gravity which must be compensated if you want to use it in order to estimate the movement of a robot. They can also be used uh, in order to measure the inclination of a robot, the tilt of a robot, since they measure the gravity and this is typically used for instance on a drone because uh, we assume that the motion or the acceleration caused by the motion is significantly smaller uh, than the gravity uh, acceleration. They are typically used on a robot base in order to measure uh, its position and in case of wheeled robots, uh, if we use it, we, the wheel slippage is not affecting the measurement. Other types of odometry sensors are potentiometers and whole effect sensors. Potentiometers are resistive sensors that modify their value depending on the position of a wiper uh, that is attached to an axis. And we can find them linear or rotary ones. And the main, pro the main problem they present is their short lifetime which makes them unsuitable for industrial environments or applications. On the other hand, we have whole effect sensors that detect pulses of when uh, a magnetic field is induced on the sensor by magnets when they pass by near the sensor. They are typically used as non-contact positioning sensors in order to detect uh, that an, an axis has reached a specific position, but they can also be used to measure the angular position of an axis without the mechanical friction and problems that might have, for instance, in this case, a potentiometer. Range sensors provide distances to objects near the sensor. We find three uh, different types of sensors or main sensors, such as infrared sensors, which they work uh, uh, with uh, light in the infrared spectrum, ultrasound sensors or sonar, and LiDAR sensor or laser. Each of them has a series of properties and characteristics that make them uh, particularly useful uh, on specific applications or environments. Infra the infrared sensors emit an infrared light and this uh, light rate is detected by a photo uh, detector device. There is a configuration that uses the angle of incidence of the light in order to de determine the distance, while there are, there are another basic configuration that uses the amount of light that, that we receive in order to estimate uh, or determine the, the, the distance. There are generally sensors used for short ranges such as collision detectors indeed. Uh, they are affected by sunlight since sun also emits, infrared, emits light on the infrared spectrum and the color of the surface uh, it's affecting, uh, significantly affecting the measurements because dark um, materials absorb more energy and then the, the, the amount of light. They have a small angular uncertainty, so this can be considered as a narrow beam array. 
On the other hand, ultrasonic sensors have membranes that are used to both emit and receive ultrasonic wave. There are sensors in which the same membrane is used for emission and reception, and there's another configuration in which you, we use two independent membranes. Uh, the way they, they work is uh, to measure or the distance by the time of flight in which the wave uh, travels along the, the air or water, and um, the, the, the wave is bounced off the object, and it's measured back uh, by the membrane. And this time is proportional to the distance this wave has traveled. They are capable of measuring uh, medium range distances. We're talking about two eight meters usually. And they present a, a set of problems such as the cross-talking effect. Uh, when we try to, uh, let's say, uh, trigger uh, several ultrasound waves simultaneously, or the angular uncertainty that causes that the measurements need to be treated as if they are uh, an actual cone. In order to uh, obtain or extract some useful information from these sensors to build maps, for instance, we might take these uh, aspects into account. Although uh, some of them uh, can be, or in many, in many cases, I mean, uh, they can be used as simple, simple obstacle detectors. And in this case, these aspects, or most of these aspects, can be simply ignored. Underwater, they work very well, and their behavior is very different. Uh, with the right treatment, uh, high-quality images on an uh, underwater uh, robot uh, can be obtained. In the air, the quality of the measurement is uh, significantly quite worse. By despite of that, we use it for as, as a rain sensor. Finally, we have the LiDAR sensor that uses a laser light in order to generate some angular scan that allows objects to be detected around the sensor. It has a rotating mirror uh, that detects the laser light uh, and can generate up to 360 uh, uh, or scan in some models uh, full of points. Um, there are some models that provide a 2D scan, but others add an additional motor that allows uh, detecting 3D points. They are generally very precise and reliable sensors compared to infrared or ultrasound sensors, and they can measure medium and long range distances. At indoors, LiDAR models usually detect up to 4-12 meters without any problem, while outdoor LiDAR models can detect distances between 20 meters or even 150-200 meters. Its accuracy varies from few millimeters or few centimeters depending on the model, obviously. These sensors are slightly affected by glass mirrors and highly reflective materials, but in general, the color of the surface has little influence on them. Cameras, uh, on the other hand, are widely used uh, in mobile robots, and we will mainly distinguish between two types of cameras, 2D cameras, they are traditional cameras, and 3D cameras. As we have mentioned, they are also linear cameras, but these are not widely used in mobile robotics. Special or special mention deserves infrared cameras that they capture infrared light from the environment in an image. Typically, uh, 2D or matrix cameras are perspective cameras that use a lens that focuses all light rays through one point and projects them onto the camera sensor. Uh, the sensors can be CCD or CMOS type. Each of these technologies have different properties, although CMOS cameras are the ones that are widely used in many robots. The resolution of a camera has to do with the amount of information they can provide in an image and it's measured in pixels, while the speed has to do with the camera's ability to capture images and it's usually measured in frames per second, or FPS. Some camera models incorporate a, a, program, a programmable sensor, or a pro, sorry, processor, that allows processing the image in built -in, using built-in functions. And this is known as, as a, a smart camera. 
Regarding the processing, there are many techniques that allow extracting information from images from classic algorithms used in the industry from uh, processing images based on filters and masks and kernels and specific algorithms also to recognize objects and the, uh, the geometry characteristics on, on the image, the texture, uh, or also using, for instance, machine learning methods. It is also common to use beacon detectors to position objects with respect to a camera because the beacon has a specific geometry and, and um, an aspect, as is the case, for instance, as a Ruko Marcus. Nowadays, it's very common to use deep neural networks to uh, detect all type of objects in images. Special mention goes through uh, three d vision uh, systems, as is the case of stereo camera systems that use two cameras and some uh, techniques such as epipolar geometry in order to detect objects in the 3D space. Another type of camera uses uh, an active sensing such as time of flight or structured light or lighter cameras that allow obtaining also 3D points on the environment. Currently, a lot of work is being done on 3D deep learning methods in order to extract information uh, from uh, point clouds in order to uh, process and, uh, these, uh, the measurements provided by these sensors. Positional systems allow to measure the position of a device on the Earth's surface to be detected uh, globally by satellites. All of them are characterized by the fact that there is a constellation of satellites around the Earth that are controlled and monitored by specific control stations. Satellites transmit information about their position uh, and the time instant when the signal is emitted and receivers uh, receive those signals from different uh, satellites to establish their position. The acronym GNSS corresponds to Global Navigation Satellite Systems, and the most famous one of is the GPS, whose acronym means Global Positioning System. This system is owned, or this system is owned by the United States government and was the first of them. However, nowadays we can find other countries and also uh, associations uh, that, or, uh, or, uh, that have created their own systems of satellites in order to localize devices. Russia has the GLONASS system, China, ba Baidu. Europe has created Galileo. These systems are subject to a series of systematic errors that has to do with the signal propagation and clock synchronization errors. Its accuracy is around few meters, and it improves with the, um, the number of satellites they can detect, and that depends on where you are uh, on the global Earth. The DGPS system is a differential system which allows errors to be significantly reduced compared to the uh, received positions uh, because they use a geolocalized base station, and the errors that the geolocalized base station receives compared to the receiver it's um, the difference between uh, these positions. Uh, it, this is an error that can be compensated. But this, this kind of uh, systems is only effective on, within a, a range of few kilometers around this uh, base station. On the other hand, there are positioning systems that use in, are, are used in, in indoors, since GNSS, GNSS systems only works um, or perform well outdoors. Uh, here we uh, use a set of reflectors that are positioning or uh, properly positioned on the environment. Uh, for instance, we can use a laser sensor that detects the distance and the angle of these reflectors. And using some triangulations, we can compute the position of the robot. Um, other systems have been developed recently based on, uh, in this case, uh, radio signals such as ultra wideband or Bluetooth low energy. These systems work through a series of antennas that receive information from mobile devices and through some processing, they transmit the position of these uh, mobile devices to other uh, devices. Uh, in indoor mobile robots, we can use ultra wideband systems because they are, they are becoming popular. They have uh, an accuracy of 10, 20 centimeters 
uh, while Bluetooth low energy systems are less precise and not used in, in mobile robots. Well, in this presentation, I have introduced the main sensors that we use in robotics. Details of some te these technologies will be seen in other presentations. Thank you very much.